Hi, I'm Julie Joffre. I'm the Intervention Specialist for the Elite Graduate Program, and today we are putting on a workshop. Uh, our presenter is John Hernandez, and he's going to speak to us about research conferences and the people that can help get you there. Us. Here you go, John. All righty. Okay. That's good. Yeah. All right, so my name is John Hernandez, and I'm a graduate student here at Texas A&M in the Master's in Biology program. I'm going to talk to you about research conferences and the people who can help get you there. I recently attended the Sigma Xi International Research Conference, and Elite helped me get, Elite helped me get there. So I'll talk to you guys about that. So. Oops. Whoa. OK. So the Elite program is really great for graduate students because there's a lot of different things that they help you out with. You know, there's statistics tutoring, writing consultants, uh, free printing, which is great, travel programs, fellowship programs. And these are just some of the ways that they can help out graduate students. You know, their main goal is to help graduate students, you know, psychologically, academically, financially get through their program successfully. So uh, one that I use more than anything is the free printing. I do research here on campus. so. There's a lot of papers I got to print and read and highlight and stuff like that. So now that I talked about Elite a little bit, I want to talk to you about my research. So I applied for a travel grant, got accepted for my research, me and my partner, Catherine Adams, and we went to the Sigma Xi International Research Conference. Here we are, <laughs> Catherine and I. Uh, we worked really hard on this project. I'm going to talk to you about uh, one of our projects. We worked together for about two years, and we worked really hard on this project for about a year. So I'm going to kind of give you the background and some of the basics of the project and talk to you about my experience at the, the, the Sigma Xi conference that we went to. So this guy here is a Plesia Californica. He's a marine mollusk who's been studied a lot in neuroscience, specifically for learning and memory. Actually, Eric Kandel in 2000 won the Nobel Prize in Physiology studying learning and memory for this animal. So a lot of research has been done on this uh, marine mollusk. And it's a great model organism. One of the reasons is because they have identifiable neurons. You know, you can use electrophysiology techniques, you know, get into a neuron, and based off of its activity, you can tell what the neuron is associated with because of previous research. Again, a lot of research been done with this guy. And they have well characterized neural circuits. So we understand a lot and we're kind of continuing on the work of Eric Kandel. So specifically we study two behaviors. The first one is the tail siphon withdrawal reflex. And in this picture, in the next slide, you'll be able to see it. In this picture, you can't really see it. They have a siphon. It's just this column of tissue, and it brings, sucks in water for the gills. It's their way of getting oxygen, their respiratory uh, organ. And the tail siphon withdrawal reflex is, you know, when there's any kind of ex external stimuli, they'll kind of contract and pull in the siphon because they're trying to, you know, protect their gills. So, we, we can study that because it's a great way to see how the animal protects itself. And we also study feeding behavior, just biting. So these two behaviors are really important to study because you can measure them easily. You know, they're easily seen. Uh, and they're quantifiable. You, know, you can see the changes in these behaviors. So it's a great animal organism for learning and memory. And another perk of this guy, he's a, he's a great model organism. He has a neuron called B51. It's actually in his buccal ganglia one of the brains in this animal. And B51 is really neat in that it's a decision-making neuron for feeding behavior. Its activity is directly associated with the feeding behavior you're seeing in animals. So say you get an animal, and these animals eat seaweed. So you crush up some seaweed, put it in some water, put it in the seaweed juice, and you look at how many times the animal bites, right? And say you're seeing the animal, and he bites, bites maybe 20 times, or he's biting a lot, or he isn't biting at all. Well, if you take out one of the ganglia, the buccal ganglia in this guy, and try to find B51, it's a tough guy to find. And you look at its activity, the, direct, the activity is directly consistent with the behavior you see in, the, in an intact animal. So there's a lot, of, a lot of good things about studying this guy, and it gives us a lot of insights from the behavior to the physiology in terms of learning and memory. So now I give you some background, talk to you about our research. So we work on long-term sensitization. Uh, kind of break it down in an easy way. So say you're walking in Corpus Christi Hall, right? And you're walking and walking, and you hear someone either drop a book or someone kind of makes a loud laugh, and you kind of get startled quick. Not too bad, just kind of a little jump, right? And you go to a class. And in that class, say you're watching a scary movie, or there's some grotesque images, or you know something startling, right? 
and then you get out of the class and you, someone drops a book and you kind of more startled. You know, that experience kind of enhanced that response. So that's what we study here. So what we study is the change in the tail cycle withdrawal reflex or the protective response and biting. So when you normally shock the tail, just a subtle shock, you'll kind of see it siphon up at the top, kind of contract a little bit and go back to normal. Nothing really big. But when you shock the animal a little bit stronger, you'll see the animal pull in that siphon and contract and hold it in a lot longer. So you can see the changes from that training. It's called long-term sensitization training. And after those really strong shocks, you also see the animal doesn't bite. So those are two behaviors that come from that kind of training. But also another phenomenon occurs, uh, serotonin, 5-HT. Uh, when we hear about serotonin, we usually hear about it in humans for depression. And in humans, it actually makes us happy. It puts us in a, in a better mood. But for these guys, it kind of does something different. It, previous research has shown when you shock an animal, there's an increase in serotonin in the body. And what that is responsible for is that increase in the tail siphon drug fix, that protection of the gills. Well, previous research also showed us that when you put an animal in a concentrated amount of serotonin, you also see this tail siphon withdrawal reflex increase, this increased protection. But no one really looked at the biting behavior. So what we did in this experiment is we tried to mimic the shocks and we put the animals in uh, concentrated serotonin and we wanted to see if, number one, if you do see the increase in tail siphon, re tail siphon withdrawal reflex, and, but also see what happens to the bite. So I didn't put up the schematic, I didn't want to, too much information, but so before, in the beginning of the experiment, we'll kind of do subtle shocks and we'll kind of see how long it takes for the animal siphon to return back to normal and we'll look at its feeding behavior in a seaweed juice. And after that, we either put it in just salt water, regular salt water, or we'll put it in that concentrated serotonin uh, solution. And then after that, we'll look again at feeding and again at the tail siphon withdrawal reflex, the contraction of the siphon. And we'll see how that training, that serotonin, affected the, those two behaviors. So, and we'll also take out you know, the brain, the buccal ganglia, and look at neuron B51 to make sure that the physiology, what we see in the cell, is consistent with the behavior. So what we found is really neat. So what we found is that when you put these guys in the serotonin solution, you do see an increase in the tail type and drop reflex but you don't see a decrease in bites. So this is really important because this means that these two behaviors are modulated by two different molecules. It was very interesting for us. Uh, a way I can maybe uh, describe this is, you know, post-traumatic stress disorder. When people are, go through a traumatic situation, they won't exhibit some of the normal behaviors. They may not eat or they may not be social. And, and that is on top of a heightened state of fear. So, Research like this is really important because it helps us understand that there may be different mechanisms for these changes in these behaviors. And when Katie and I tried to answer this question, when we got this research and we presented it, we actually were awarded a superior presentation at this conference. And it was really exciting for us. It was a great, it was a great experience. So now that you kind of know a little bit about my research and somewhat about what people present at these research conferences. I want to talk to you about the perks of research conferences and how Elite can help you get there and make it a, a better experience for you. So research conferences, for the most part, are people presenting research. Sometimes it's uh, different kinds of research. There was a girl that presented there. She went to Uganda for an internship. And she just talked about her experiences there. And she's trying to raise awareness for uh, different um, sexual transmitted diseases. And so the kind of research I did, other people were presenting other kinds of research. So if you want to go to some of these research conferences, it's, it, it's not just isolated. And it's not all just biology based. A lot of people think, you know, it's biology, microbiology, neuroscience, but there are different multidisciplinary uh, research conferences, like the Sigma Xi conference I went to, and I'll talk to you a little bit about that later. So there are different options when it comes to these conferences. Think about that. So here are some of the different disciplines or the different uh, subjects that were presented here at the Sigma Xi Research Conference. So you can see there's from interdisciplinary research to physics and astronomy to computer science. So if maybe you're on the border, you're studying biology, but you're not sure if you want to do maybe biochemistry or cellular molecular biology, it's a great opportunity to see 
you know, different fields and see people presenting different kinds of research and gives you ideas. Maybe you're, maybe you're in the wrong field or maybe it reaffirms that you're in the right field. So it's, a, it's good exposure to different uh, kinds of research. So, so one of the main perks are uh, distinguished guest speakers. Uh, at a lot of these conferences, they'll have someone there who has you know, cutting edge research, well recent research, they maybe got a really great grant or are doing you know, research about the here and now. And one of the people that presented at the Sigma Xi conference was Ke Dr. Kevin Gurney. And he actually got a pretty substantial grant from NASA. And what he did was he created this high resolution map of carbon dioxide emissions from fossil fuels, you know, cars, buses. And so it was really applicable to here and now. And it would talk about how carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, how it gets back in the soil, in the ocean, how the carbon dioxide levels change, and, and direct, how that's directly applicable to uh, global warming. You know, everyone's worried about that right now. So one of the big perks about going to these conferences is seeing people who are professionals. You know, they're doing great research. You know, he talked a little bit about some of his struggles, some of the things he's been through. It, and it's a great experience. You get to see that, you know, he's human too. All these people are doing great work. Uh, they're human too, and you get to learn from them. And sometimes you even get to talk to them, which is, it's a really, really neat. And so, so some other opportunities. Um, if you're presenting research there, you get to meet with professionals. <coughs> they'll be grading your research. They'll be judging you. You can get advice from them, suggestions. You can talk to them about you know, what they've been through. They can talk to you about maybe some things you want to think about in research. That, that's really great, you know. There's not a lot of, there's not necessarily a book out there telling you how to talk to a professional. So it's great experience and it's great exposure to see how to talk with them. And the great thing about that is after that's done, you also have the opportunity to socialize with them. You know, there's, like there was a, a, a dinner there, actually, where Kevin Gurney spoke. And it was really great. There was like two PhDs or postdocs or professionals at the table. And you got to talk to them. You're eating some food, kind of relaxing. It's a more social environment. You got to ask some suggestions. You know, what's it like? You know, there's a big difference between undergrad, graduate, and you know, after PhD or postdoc. So it, it, was, it was a really good experience and something you can learn a lot from. And it'll help you kind of refocus. So. Another thing is representatives from universities. You know, we have representatives from different universities come here when we have college uni you know, universities come in here and talk to us. But it's great to also go out and talk to different people. There are kiosks, there's representatives, and they'll give you ideas and suggestions. And a lot of times, they're actually students. And that's the best part. You get to see what they're going through, what were their struggles, what they have to think about. I mean, that's kind of priceless. You can't really give up an experience like that. So several different things in the professional side to think about uh, if you have the opportunity to go to a research conference. Some other perks is that you get to interact with colleagues. You know, here on campus in different labs you have other people you work with and you get used to them and it's great to work with them, hear their struggles, what they're going through. But when you go to one of these conferences, you get to talk to your peers, people your age, you know, and say, well, what are you going through? It's, it's, it's a good way to kind of refocus, especially if you're feeling down or if you've got a lot of things going on in stress. Here are the people who are stressed too, you know, know that everyone's going through it and they're still making it. I can do it. Uh, so it's, it's a great way to also kind of network with people. And it's a resume builder. I mean, saying that you went to a conference. If you did res research, saying you went to a conference and you did all the scientific method, you did all the work, all the research, all the stats, all the math, and you brought it all together and you made it a cohesive project and presented it. I and mean, that's a great thing. But even if you didn't do research, it shows that you're proactive. You know, a lot of people don't have that opportunity. Research opportunities are kind of tough to get. And so if you don't have the opportunity, you know, maybe you might get funding to go just to see all the different people presenting. You know, you can get experience from them, talk to them, how do they do it? You know, and so it's not just for the people doing research, it is for other people. And some uh, perks that are maybe shouldn't be your primary reason for going, but opportunity to visit new cities. You know, we a lot of times get really stressed, there's a lot of stuff we're doing, homework, and sometimes just getting out of a new city, and it is focused, you know, you have to kind of have your head in the game. But going to a new city, you spend three-fourths of the day you know, at the conference talking to people, and then you spend the night maybe walk around, see the city. It's a time to take a break. It shouldn't be your primary reason to going, but it, it's, it's a good experience to get out. And for the most part, sometimes there's free food, which is always a good thing for grad or um, students. It's always a great thing, free food. So 
those are all kind of the perks for um, going to a research conference. A lot of great things to think about. And now I want to talk about the elite program. So when I applied for this travel request and they accepted me, I had a lot of personal help, you know, from Julie Joffrey and all these guys. It was, it was really, really great. And the biggest thing was they paid for most of my travel expenses and they could help me with, you know, hotel reservations and flight reservations. And the biggest thing I think is when money's really tight and you're paying a lot of money up front, they got me my money back really quick. It was a quick reimbursement. They kept up with me, kept me updated. So it was really a great experience and they always kind of ask, you know, how are you feeling? Do you feel better? How was the experience? So they were really personal and it was it was really, really great. And they really want you to go out there and go to these conferences and get experience and learn and come back and talk to people here. And it, it's, it really is all in all just a great learning experience. So I put this in here. Uh, mainly I just want to say, you know, if you are doing research, the general thing you have to do is you have to kind of write a little bit. If you're presenting research, what, what are you doing? Why are you doing it? What are you expecting to learn? So, and if you're not presenting research and you're just going to see these people presenting in different, you know, kiosks and representatives and you're wanting to just enjoy the experience, it kind of refocuses you. They ask you questions like, what are you wanting to learn? What do you want to take from this? And that, to me, it was really important because it kind of made me refocus and think about what do I want to do? What's the purpose of this? What should I take from this? You know, I can't just go there and have a good time. No, I need to, I need to learn something. I need to, you know, take something from this and maybe talk to other people about it. So. And you can get go on their website. They have it's that big <laughs> icon there. You can't really miss it. Go on there, um, and that's pretty much it. So, any questions? And you should go to research conferences, talk to elite. And if you're not a graduate student, there are other programs that can help also. But if you are a graduate student, you should probably think about elite. It's a great program, and they're there to help you. So, any questions? <laughs> I'm done. Thank <laughs> you.